When you think 1920s American railroading, what comes to mind? Art Deco advertisements? Vaudeville music? The beginnings of sleek, streamlined locomotive designs? Henry Ford, founder of Ford Motor Company, owning the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad? Here's how that started. The Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton, or DTNI, was formed out of a 1901 merger with the Detroit and Lima Northern Railway and the Ohio Southern Railway, forming the Detroit Southern Railroad. The DSR, like the series of railroads before it, went bankrupt due to poor project and route planning, as well as a lack of funds to improve the system. The DSR would become the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railway in 1905. Owner Harry B. Hollins and company planned to reach Ironton, Ohio based solely on the name alone, but after several failed route plans, went into receivership in 1908. Ah, oh, shucks. The company would be successfully restructured as the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad on March 1, 1914. Then World War I came around and all American railroads were placed under federal government control until 1918. After the government returned their railroads to private ownership in 1920, they returned them in a very worn out, unmaintained condition. The DTNI fumbled and limped to get by post war time. The railroad was known as the Road to Nowhere due to several poor quality, meandering, and redundant routes. This caught the attention of Ford Motor Company founder Henry Ford, who was displeased with the service that their railroad provided, but saw potential in the company. The DTNI had now possessed a line with other rail connections that ran south from Detroit all the way to Ironton, Ohio, near Huntington, Virginia. Ford figured he could use the DTNI to serve his new River Rouge complex plant in Dearborn, Michigan, and establish a direct rail system of service from raw material to finished product. Ford purchased the DTNI for $5 million along with assuming all of its debt on July 9, 1920 and got to work whipping the railroad into shape. Ford got rid of unnecessary management employees, raised wages, rebuilt and modernized the fleet of locomotives, he improved and double-tracked main lines, and built the forts and shops in River Rouge. This acted as the primary maintenance shops for the railroad. Henry Ford sought to turn the DTNI into a high-class operation by keeping his engines in immaculate condition. Ford had ordered nickel plating on piping, polishing the boilers to a perfect shine, and applying white walls to locomotive wheels. Ford turned the DTNI from a run-of-the-mill, forgettable railroad into a company that other roads envied. Satisfied with his improvements, Ford and his never-ending wallet conducted an electrifying experiment. Ford, attempting to cut costs of steam power, constructed a 15-mile electrified line from his new River Rouge plant in Dearborn to Flat Rock, Michigan. Ford also planned to electrify a route from Carleton to Maybe, Michigan. The Dearborn to Flat Rock line used 7.5-ton reinforced concrete catenary structures to power his new project. Foundations for the arches reached out to the interchange point with the Ann Arbor Railroad and Diane, but they were never completed. Electricity generated at his River Rouge power plant powered the line via overhead wires. These new electric engines began operating in 1926. However, the 5,000 horsepower engines used so much power, it caused the lights to flicker in the power plant and caused issues for both power users. Henry Ford also had plans to electrify the entire Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton system, including all the way down to Ohio for a future connection with the coal-carrying Virginian Railway. However, it was deemed too expensive. Ford's new train enterprise wasn't without its other problems either. Ford expected his DTNI employees to have multiple jobs, something against union regulations. He also fought the Interstate Commerce Commission frequently over shipping rates. Ultimately, Ford became fed up with the increasing operating costs of his railroad and the failure of his electrification experiment. He in turn sold the DTNI to the Pennsylvania Railroad subsidiary, Penroad, on June 27, 1929. Ford's entire electric train enterprise would be scrapped shortly thereafter in 1930, reverting back to steam and then converted to diesel in 1955. Penroad discovered that Ford could have cut operating costs by converting his electric lines back to steam. While Henry Ford's dream of purchasing the Virginian Railway were never fulfilled, the railroad that would be nicknamed in his honor continued to thrive as a railroad deeply rooted in carrying loads for the auto industry and in Michigan. Ford's improvement legacy laid the groundwork for the railroad to continue its successful career even after his ownership. After Penn Central sold the DTNI to private investors in 1968, the DTNI would then be acquired by the Grand Trunk Western in 1980 and fully merged by 1983, thus closing the chapter that was the Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad. Ford's concrete arches still stand today along Canadian National's Dearborn subdivision in near-perfect condition. 
the arches coupled with frequent automotive rail traffic that the line sees, is a constant reminder of the railroad that will always be known as Henry Ford's Railroad.